But the reality is, Lamine, um, Morocco says it will not give up one grain of sand in the Western Sahara. Um, it wants everybody to be united in one country, one big happy family. They've got a lot of support from the rest of the Arab world. You've got very few friends out there. Well, I don't know. That's a question mark. We need to, 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 we need to, take, to check it and to see the validity of that. That is the Moroccan message. But in any way, no one recognizes actually the Moroccan sovereignty over Western Sahara. And I think, you know, uh, we are also a member of African Union. And uh, I don't think South Africa has been let uh, down the Sahara. In the country, we have a very strong support from South Africa. Well, we and an of embassy. course, you we have, have natural resources as well. Alas, we're we running out of time. But yeah. thank you very much uh, for coming on board. Yes, thank, thank you. you. Well, an event which did make international headline news was the student protests in London a few days back. More than 50,000 descended on the English capital to campaign over the planned rise in university fees. A minority group stormed the Conservative Party's headquarters in scenes unprecedented since the poll tax riots of 1990. Joining us today is activist Ian Drummond from the organisation Student Respect. Ian, how did a mass peace demonstration turn into a riot? Well, I think there's a lot of anger out there. Um, funnily enough, on the demonstration itself, there was more anger towards Clegg than Cameron, towards the Lib Dems and the Tories. And if Lib Dem HQ had been on the demo route, I don't know what would have happened. But um, Tory HQ to the most angry was, I suppose, an obvious um, target. And uh, although I don't condone smashing the windows and bringing down the ceilings, according to some news reports of people who just happen to inhabit the same building as Tory HQ, when you've had this head of anger built up in the student body by a government made up of some ministers who signed pledges not to raise fees by one penny and have now tripled them, um, we can see uh, what's happened and it's probably not going to be the last time. Because there are some who might say that if there hadn't been violence the media wouldn't have covered your uh, topic at all and wouldn't have covered the demonstration. I, I certainly think so. It certainly wouldn't have made uh, international news and I think that's actually a very dangerous trend of the media in this country. Stop the war demos of hundreds of thousands, never mind 50,000, have been given almost no coverage in the press which actually is um, a disincentive to peaceful protest and an incentive to go more violent, just to be noticed. Now, you're a member of the National Union of Students, but you're also a member of Student Respect, which is on, on the left of um, politics. It was left-wing students and anarchists that were accused of causing the problems at the Conservative Party headquarters. Was that a fair statement? Well, I didn't uh, recognise uh, the faces that I saw in the building, but to me they looked quite ordinary faces. Uh, they looked like ordinary students, some of them maybe caught up in the moment. Um, there might have been an anarchist core. I'm certainly not an anarchist myself. I think Cameron's verging close to anarchism with his dismantling of the state. If you look at the pictures on the news from the protest inside the building, they look like ordinary people. I guess some of them might never have been to political demonstration before in their life, and now here they are. Can we expect more trouble? ahead? I think we can. I think we've seen in other countries, um, in Greece and France, much more um, action than we've seen in this country, which has been actually remarkably quiescent until now. When you think about um, the massiveness of the cuts that are planned, the idea that the British people are still going along with it up to this point is in a way strange, and I think it's now chickens are starting to come home to roost Why for do you Cameron. think it's taken so long for students to really up, rise up? I mean, 50,000 actually isn't that large a number as part of the student population, is it? I suppose, and I think the National Union of Students has not um, organised well over the last um, few years. It's taken a, a very positive turn since Labour, whose uh, members run the National Union of Students has been turfed out of office. Exactly. And Isn't it one of the politicians in the Labour Party that run your union? Yes, but at least uh, with the Labour Party out of office, they know they have to oppose the Tories. And to be fair, what the Tories are doing is uh, much worse than even what Labour did, which was bad enough. And I think that now all the um, pent-up anger is coming to a head. Um, well, interesting times, certainly for the students. Ian Drummond, thank you very much for coming in. Thank, thank you. you very much for having me.
British Prime Minister, as you've just heard, was thousands of miles away preparing to attend the G20 summit in Seoul, where protests against capitalism abounded. Over here, the coalition government is instituting mass cuts in public expenditure, but our next guest believes they've got their economics wrong. Welcome to Professor George Irvin, retired from SOAS University. George Osborne is saying cut, cut, cut. Is that the right policy? I don't think it is the right policy and it's based on a number of economic fallacies and it's likely to make things worse, not better for Britain. But we're told that uh, we're facing a crisis, that there are massive debts. Surely the, the best way is to cut 